Let me pull this thing out. Right. You see? There's your ABS sensor made into the wheel bearing. Welcome back to the channel you guys my name is jack this is gas diesel garage and i'm here to make sure you don't get screwed by the dealer so stay tuned well today's victim is a kia soul a 2017 model and this has got a problem with the abs Oop. if you got abs issues if your light's staying on well, we're gonna find out why it's on and we're gonna fix it. Now to start with on diagnosing the ABS light, we're gonna need some access to a computer that can at least read the trouble codes on the ABS system. And I happen to have a computer right here. Let's just hook it on up and uh, see what we got. Now to pull codes off of a Kia Soul, you gotta pop this panel right there. You're going to go after that plug right there, or outlet rather. You're going to plug this on up. You're going to make sure it's all in the on position, which it already is. And uh, let's press this. And we'll have that boot up and uh, we'll come right back. Okay, I want to say now, I'm sorry for the lighting. I know I got a terrible glare, but we're going to go down to codes. Press yes. And let's see what we got here. We got a C1206 left rear sensor opener shorted and a C1209 right rear sensor open or shorted. I'm willing to bet the rear ABS sensors are pretty much just screwed. And uh, yes, no crap, right? But uh, let's go ahead and jack this thing on up and take a look at the electrical of the uh, ABS sensors. All right, now that we got the wheels off, we need to start to take a look at the ABS sensors. Now the ABS sensor is actually made into this spindle here. Here's the wire. See, see how it goes up in there? And that's where that plug is going to be. It's going to be right in there. So we need to gain access to this. So we need to uh, pretty much take the rotor off and the uh, caliper. Now what I do is I take the caliper off for uh, bracket bolts right here. One and two. Saves you a whole lot of issues. So you don't have to, you know, re-grease your brakes and uh, anyways, that's just what we're gonna do. So you take your 14 millimeter. Hmm. See that, the, that bolt down there? Right there. Yeah. And this Now we need to take the rotor off. How we do that? Got to take these stupid little set screws on here. 
out. Now, I've already had this rotor off before, but if they're that tight, get yourself a, uh, a Phillips head screwdriver and just tap it a few times. Because what you're doing is that you're jarring it loose. If you strip it, you have to drill it out. The only reason why these things are here is so when it comes out on the assembly line, the computer just holds it up there, or robot, if you will. The robot holds it up there, and basically they have this little mechanism that goes in there. You like my sound effects? I know, it's just stupid. So, just take this on out. And if this is stuck, never hit the rotor itself. Hit the hub part. There you go. There we are. Now this is what we're after. This right here. The hub bearing. Now the hub bearing has the sensor made into it. That's why they're so expensive. Yeah. But if you look in the description below, I got a hot deal on these things. I think we got, what, well, we get both of them for 80 bucks? Both of them, both sides. Better than you getting screwed by the dealer paying hundreds. I promise you that. So that's why I'm doing this video for you. Okay. Now what's holding this hub bearing on are four 14 millimeter bolts. That one, that one, that one, and that one. And you're probably gonna wonder, how do you get to those bolts? Some engineers are smart. You gotta line this hole up and then stick your 14 millimeter down inside there and then you start wrench. You can do this job with all hand tools by the way. Slide your bolts out of the holes. Two, three, and four. All right. Now what you're gonna do is hit it just a couple of times just to get it loose because remember, we got a plug back here. You don't wanna rip that thing out because then we're gonna have some real problems. All right. Here, come check this out, Ray. You see the, the, the ABS sensor wire? How they sit right here in these little holes? So you don't rip them out. Pull them up. Because you're going to need a little bit of slack. Watch me pull this thing out. Right. See? There's your ABS sensor. Made into the wheel bearing. Don't get screwed by the, the dealer, fellas and ladies. Just push down on that clip. It pulls right on out. Now what what I want to do now, I want to test this. I want to see what the ohms are on this sensor because it all works on ohms. When this thing spins, that's sending a signal to the computer that is reading. Let's see why it's not reading. Now to test out this old one, just get your multimeter out, set it to ohms, and we're going to ohm out the plug. Okay, that's reading 495 ohms. I don't know if that's good or not, but we're, what we're going to do is we're gonna go check the brand new ones right here. And we're gonna see what this, these read. Now remember, that said 495 ohms. So let's see what the new ones read. 385, it's almost about a 100 ohm difference. Now, I don't know what the spec is on it, but I know that this is not the same as that old one. Or the old one's not the same as the new ones. Let's check this for a second time. Let's go sec let's go do the second one, because we're doing both of them. 375. Hmm. So these read almost the same, so I'm willing to bet 
that's pretty much the problem is that this one is screwed so let's go ahead and install these things all right now we got the new one it's just the reverse process pretty much just plug it back up mechanic cat want to help okay i guess he said no right just slide it in just like this just like this there we go all righty and we need to take our four bolts and don't lose uh, yes okay oops that's not what i wanted to do just gotta slide them through the holes again and I'm sure there's a torque spec on this. I don't know it. You guys can search the internet for that. But uh, I rule of thumb, just the Guten tight. Guten tight's good. I mean, it's good for uh, BMW and Audi and Mercedes. Even though I use electric impacts, I still go over it by hand just to make sure. And now remember the ABS wire. Guys, make sure you put them back in their slots. You don't want this thing to keep moving around because if you damage it or rip it, you'll be having some other issues. All right. Oh. And the ABS weather plug, I guess you can call it. Put that back in. Just like that. And now for the rotor. Make sure you line them up with this, those screw heads. A lot of times I don't put these things back in. They're just quite a pain in the butt. Here's something you may not know. Remember when I was telling you guys about the screws on how the uh, assembly, assembly line puts these rotors on? You see the little white mark? That's how you can tell that they're factory. This is a factory rotor I can tell because it's got white QC marks I guess you could call it. But uh, don't put these things on terribly tight because you don't want to strip them. Next. Now, you just gotta put the two bolts back on the caliper bracket. There we go. on down now because we're done with this side we can go ahead and put the wheel back on one less step from when we set it off at the jack stands okay 
now on over to the next side because we got to do the same thing we did to that side to this side They're being a pain, all you gotta do is just jiggle it just a little bit. Alright, there we go. And push it on. Okay, that came all good. Alright. Guess it kinda helped doing the brakes. Which that'll be in another video, by the way. How to put brakes on a Kia Soul.
Okay, now what we need to do, since all of it's installed, we gotta go back to the computer, make sure it's reading zeros, and make sure that daggone ABS and traction control light does not stay on. First thing, this is a good sign. You turn it to the on position, not the engine, but the on position. Turn it on, come here, come and look. All right, maybe up. Oh, it's gone out. But I'm gonna do you one more. I'm actually gonna put the computer on it and make sure those things are reading zero, not that 157, which is ridiculous. All right, come closer. Remember earlier, my rear left was at 157, and the right rear was at 157 also. They're all reading zero. They're supposed to be reading zeros all the way through. Guess what, world? Guess what, Matt? What? We fixed it without getting screwed by the dealer. So if you enjoyed this episode and you don't want to get screwed by the dealer, make sure you check out the link in the description below and pick yourself up those wheel bearings, both of them, for 80 bucks. I think the when we looked, it was like, what, about 300 some dollars, $400 oh, yeah. just for the parts? Imagine what you would be paying at the dealer to fix that. I mean, it only took a matter of what, maybe maybe an hour at the tops. And uh, at least you know how to diagnose it yourself. And no, you don't need this computer. You don't need that. You can actually ohm it out. And uh, that's how you know that they're bad. So uh, like I said, don't get screwed by the dealer. And uh, we'll just have to see you next time. See you next time. Peace. Remember, don't get screwed by the dealer.